Hey guys, Senza here, your favorite deadbeat dad with a cigarette and milk deficiency. With the power of anime and God, Cyberpunk 2077 has experienced a surge of players and is now officially one of the best anime games of all time, sitting right up there next to the smash hit anime game, Multiverses. So with this newfound success and the fact that I haven't played this game in over two years, I thought why not revisit Night City and run a challenge that'll surely have me admitted into Arkham Asylum. Can you beat Cyberpunk 2077? without taking damage. The rules here are simple. Any bit of damage, even the smallest amount, requires me to reset the game from the most recent autosave. If AI with aimbot, bosses that can go ultra instinct, and my cheeks being parted like Moses did the Red Sea was on your bingo card, then you are in luck. Will I have the 530,000 IQ needed to flawlessly take down Oda? Will I be able to get past the scripted driving sections that force you to take damage? Make sure you grab your pizza rolls on one of your favorite zoo pals make eating fun plates, smash that like button, and sit back as you watch me answer those questions and commit a couple of war crimes in the name of YouTube Entertainment. Our story starts in the year where downloading a car is literally possible and laptop clits have all become a thing of the past. CD Projekt Red's one-to-one -one replica of Ohio is in complete shambles. Crime, death, and corpo corruption run rampant. This place needed a hero, and that is exactly where we come in. To follow the tradition of all of my videos with some sort of character creation, it was time to get wacky. I decided to make my favorite person in history. Many of you may be thinking this is BTS Jimin, but no, it's our favorite anime protagonist, Obama, aka Captain Bang Bros, a member from my Patreon. I made sure that his dick had more veins than my very own nervous system, and after about an hour of trying to get the look about right, I was ready to get to clapping. I ran with the Street Kid intro, and after this human catheter and I got caught like a boner in sweatpants, the game finally opened up, and it was time to provide the content that you guys all came here for. Right off the bat, I was told to use stealth to take out my first enemy, but on the Senza YouTube channel, this was a no-no. Going the stealthy approach early into the run drops this game's difficulty to video game journalists. Just like the masculine urge to carry all the groceries in on one go, easy wasn't something we wanted. I was on a quest to uninstall every neural processor with only my bullets, and I was going to make sure that that happened. Thanks to pinpoint precision, I was dialed in and I blew my lead all over their faces. I may not have an athletic bone in my entire bloodline, but I am genetically built as an elite gamer. The e-girl was located, and in my unprofessional medical opinion, she was clearly dead, but somehow she wasn't, and saving her was still the objective. Trauma team pulled up, I grabbed a keepsake for good luck, and then I made my way downstairs to experience this challenge run's rite of passage. I vaguely remember that there was a vehicle section in the prologue, but what I didn't remember was that Clapton Cheeks over here and his squad of goons were going to set a world record on this YouTube channel. While on our drive back to the crib, these doofuses here get straight to spanking and mercy wasn't a word in their dictionary. This normally wouldn't be a problem, except that you are forced to use one of the worst pistols in the game and these enemies can take a beating. My only option was to fire away and pray to the Elden Lords that my enemies missed their shots as I worked on dwindling down their health pool. I can tell you with confidence that the clench on my butthole was lethal. Not to mention, the absolute worst part about this section was the fact that I had to sit through not only a loading screen, but also the entire drive back, as the autosave feature decided it would like to join in on this gangbang. I sat here for 58 minutes as these men speed ran dehydration from all the diarrhea they were dumping all over me and this challenge. In a poetic gesture, at 69 resets, I decided to take a break and pop a little chalky milk to fight back the oncoming depression. While consuming my delicious beverage, I quickly remembered that you could hack in Cyberpunk 2077. Seeing as this was my first time touching the game in nearly two years, this was a Herculean development. Upon my second try using this new method, I was able to best my opponents without taking damage. Yes, I wasted an hour of my own time, and no, my mental deficiencies know no bounds. It was time to swim out into the septic sea known as Night City. Jackie and I were on our Sugma male grind set, and we had to show the world that we were more than just wide buttholes and willing mouths. To achieve our goals and begin this crusade, we were going to have to work from one of the well-known fixers in Night City, Dexter Deshawn. Our first job was simple. We were to purchase an experimental Amazon drone from the literal chromed-out fleshlights known as a maelstrom. 
Cyberpunk gives you two paths when completing this quest. The diplomatic route where you get enough credits to buy it from them, or the cock and ball torture route. I personally actually have hair on my chest and testicles, so there was only one right option. We made our way into the rectum of Maelstrom HQ, and after the deal had gone sour, it was imperative that we made it out of here with Flathead in hand. This fight with Maelstrom caused me physical pain, having to sit through 300 words of dialogue just to be able to control V for 5 seconds and then do it all again. It took me 23 tries and a few different loadout options, but hacking one of the goons and giving the other two a little bit of that sugar, spice, and everything nice was all that was needed. Our next task was getting out of this place and dealing with our very first Netrunner. For those that haven't kept up with the cyberpunk lore, I got you. Netrunners are prostate monkeys that literally hop into the mainframe to try and delete your brain system 32 folder. As long as the enemy faction has you spotted, not even NordVPN can protect you from them going Coco Banana Bonkers on your cheeks. 66 fractures in my fragile ego later, we made it out of there, and what should have been a 30 minute mission at best turned into 3 agonizing hours. And now I probably know the layout of Maelstrom HQ like the back of my cock. With Flathead in hand, we returned to Dexter, and thanks to our perseverance and determination, he offered us a heist that would have us set for life. We were to steal a copy of Johnny Silverhands, aka Keanu Reeves' consciousness, from Yorinobu Arasaka. Jackie and I located the whereabouts of the primordial being known as Keanu Silverhand through an interactable wet dream. I was introduced to Adam Smasher and his biological urges, and then we set off to Arasaka HQ to snatch this billion dollar USB stick. Operation My Mom Found My Krusty Socks So I Took Her Purple Lightsaber to Show and Tell was now a go. My suffering will only get worse as we push forward, so tech weapons are going to be my go-to later on in the run. Having not only free wall hacks, but also wall penetrating ammunition is absolutely disgusting, and I would be lobotomized if I didn't use them. With this method, funneling bullets down into my enemy's bowels without taking damage will be a cakewalk. Some of you may be heartbroken that I'm using logic and intellect in one of my challenges, but I'll tell you something even more heartbreaking. The fact that more people are probably rocking the Master Chief skin on Fortnite than there are actual players on Halo Infinite. Since this is a no damage run and there isn't much else to talk about, I'll take this time out of the video to let you all know that you look absolutely great today. Not only is your hair on point, but you also smell damn amazing. Make sure not to have too much sex out there for me, okay? Let's get back to this virtual BDSM, my favorite form of pleasure. With Arasaka now infiltrated via the flathead, we pressed on into Yorinobu's room, right been ready to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Within seconds of grabbing that bad boy, Yorinobu made an unexpected return, and to join him was his father, John Arasaka. While the two of them argued, Jackie and I sat with our thumbs up our asses, with the front row view of Cyberpunk's very own TLC family drama. Yorinobu had plans to become the head of Arasaka, and apparently he was no longer asking. He used his favorite form of family therapy, violence, and not even five minutes later, Jackie and I were framed for John Arasaka's murder. I was stripped of my guns before entering this place, so the arsenal and ammunition I had accumulated were far gone. After knocking out one of the guards and taking his SMG, I was able to do my best at taking these poor souls to Brown Town. Getting past the first set of enemies almost seemed like a dream, but it was important that I regulated my copium dosage, because this was only the beginning. As long as you don't have a deficiency in your common sense processor, all that was needed was a bit of strategic positioning and sniping to get through each level of the Arasaka Thunderdome. 4 hemorrhoids and 58 deaths was all it took to finally get a decent autosave in. But of course, we weren't even given a moment to breathe after making it through that sea of flesh, because Arasaka was quick to violate the Geneva Convention in every way possible. Fighting one of these with my limitations and no ammo wasn't the optimal scenario, especially when its only intention was to make my brain see daylight. After an attempt or two at trying to take it down, I discovered a weapon to surpass Metal Gear, just simply walking past it. Thanks to an LMG I adopted on the earlier floors, I was able to vomit bullets straight into the mouths of the enemies in the garage. With Arasaka guards dead, it was time to yabba dabba do out of this joint. But of course, that wouldn't happen, because Adam Smasher pulled up to smash in our faces. And he had no intentions of letting us leave with our hearts still beating. Drones were dispatched to take us out, and here came CD Projekt Red with another lethal kick to the scrotum. 
To save you all from the visual diarrhea of me resetting 77 times, I'll just give you all the rundown on the pain that I suffered here. And trust me, things get f***ing wacky. You are tasked to take down two smaller drones and a bigger one with an actual f***ing health bar. My first thought was to originally ignore the smaller drones and just focus on the big daddy. This seemed to be a decent idea at first, until it just wasn't. There was no way I was going to dish out enough damage with this wet noodle of a weapon, and because of that, we had ourselves a DEF CON situation. It was clear that the smaller drones needed to go, but taking them out took a handful of bullets, which left me susceptible to the bigger one and its persuasive dick. Going for crit spots wasn't really an option either, as you would have an easier time taking apart a 2x2 two two stacked lego piece with your fingers covered in oil than hitting something that small. After having my neurons stimulated and giving this scripted section a handful of tries, it was clear that my feeble testicles were in a vice grip at the hands of RN Jesus. I thought my days of pulling for Ganyu were over, but CD Projekt Red were really on some other shit with this one. Half of the time, I would get hit immediately, or a minute later after watching the bots literally miss every single bullet. With this info here, there were two options. Either commit and keep trying as these robots continue to jackhammer my asshole, strengthening my resolve and kicking at it until I get a run that favored me, or let this scripted section slide, taking the easy way out. For those of you that keep up with the lore of this channel, you know exactly which route I took. As I've said before, mama ain't raised no metaphysically inferior bitch. Eventually, I discovered tech that probably no one in the history of man would ever give a single shit about, and with this discovery, brought my victory. Taking pop shots at each of these AI tumors would, for some odd reason, lower their accuracy. Once I was able to chip away at their health bars and destroy the two smaller bots, I used my anime finishing move to take out the big boy, and finally, my two and a half hours and 78 resets of self-inflicted cock and ball torture were over. It was hard to cultivate the half chub I worked up after that massive W, because unfortunately, our partner in crime Jackie didn't make it. He entrusted me with Yorinobu's SD card full of Keanu Reeves feet pics, and then to make matters even worse, it turns out that Dexter was on Mandark's side this entire time. Following my death, I was given the absolute honor and privilege to play as the closest thing humanity will ever have to an actual god. Johnny's revolver is chef's kiss. If you've never had sex before, just use this thing. It's about the closest you can get. Thanks to this great gun, I absolutely blasted straight up booty all over the Arasaka scum that riddled this place, and Johnny set the fuses to blow. Unfortunately, I would be woken out of this wet dream to Takemura returning the favor to that dick fart Dexter, and after hopping in a getaway car with him, it was clear that associating with this guy would have me punching way above my weight class. With a bit of research on other no damage runs, I discovered that this scripted section here was literally impossible to beat without taking damage. To be honest, I did give it a shot, but gave up 4 tries in. After the 3 treacherous hours I spent earlier, you can bet those sweet little testicles of yours that my tender asshole wasn't ready for another beating. Once these Sokka henchmen were done exploiting this challenge run, I exploited their brains with my handgun. Takamura got me to a doctor, and we were finally bing chilling. Dr. Mitchell let us know that the Keanu Reeves SD card was now a malignant tumor, much like my crippling addiction to and then V went and got some well needed rest. That wouldn't last very long, as our benevolent overlord had no problem governing the shape of V's face with his fists. Canonically, it is known that in the presence of Keanu Reeves, all levels of testosterone drop significantly, and this footage here is proof of that very statement. Thanks to the doc, I was given medication to suppress Keanu, but mitigating God through a mere pill wouldn't last very long. So it was imperative that we found a solution. I made it to Takemura's meeting spot, and it was apparent that I only existed to satisfy his revenge fetish. V was dug up from his landfill grave to be weaponized. Takamura's plan was to take down Yorinobu and use me as the catalyst. Being the righteous and honorable pillar of the Night City fetishist community, I graciously obliged and went off in search of Evelyn Parker, our key to Yorinobu. Before we could work on busting this case wide open, I went out of my way to obtain a motorcycle. This wasn't needed for the run, but honestly, I just really wanted to see if that funny butt cheek motorcycle t bug was still in the game. I regret to inform you all that it is not, and my disappointment was beyond immeasurable. 
we had a lead on Evelyn's location and eventually made our way to Clouds, an establishment that provides a unique experience to us gamers, which is allowing us to finally spend intimate alone time with a man or woman. Talking and sneaking your way through this quest was an optional but smart decision, but I already hit my quota of time spent with the woman this year, so violence, as always, was the only option. I grabbed this unaware individual by the dick and twisted it, obtained his security access card, entered through a door frame that was built for the size of your mother, and literally just walked into the back room while no one was looking. Brute force and guerrilla warfare was all I needed to get myself to Woodman's door. To my surprise, he was an absolute pushover, and I beat him on my first attempt using techniques not even I thought was possible. I showed him that this was no longer Weenie Hut Jr., but the Chum Bucket, and logged this boss down in the books as no damage taken. For my determination, I was rewarded with info, and this bad little thing. This Ajax here was not only going to be useful this run, but will further optimize my dick rippage ability. Using my new weapon exclusively, I absolutely powered out of this place and threw the guardsmen in only 18 resets, most of which were due to enemies getting cheeky shots on me or shooting through walls. Although a few of my deaths were infuriating, this weapon coming into my possession was completely unexpected, and I enjoyed every Every moment of using it. I have never had this much fun getting my Senzusi Baja blasted in a challenge run before. Once I was out of those doors, I felt like a new man, and I would like a written formal apology from CD Projekt Red for ruining this moment. My heroin-like euphoric state wouldn't last very long, as I was embraced with the repulsive stench of a dirty ass, named unavoidable damage. Dr. Mitchell forgot to inform me of the long-term health consequences that came with my factory new tumor, one of which ruins this challenge run. We will be adding PTSD outburst as an exception to this challenge, as avoiding the damage taken from these is quite literally impossible. Yes, I know, I technically failed the challenge, but f*** you, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. With the info I was able to obtain, I made my way to Jig Jig Street, the land of cheap hookers and post-nut regret. There, I met with Judy at Fingers Clinic. In the name of ethical relativism, I used violence during an interrogation to get the information I needed from Finger and was pointed in the direction of Diet Brad Pitt, who just so happened to have VR footage of Evelyn's potential location. Judy and I pulled up to locate her, and it was time for my four favorite words ever, masochism. It is important to remember that during a no damage run, happiness isn't an affordable commodity, and not even better weapons such as the Ajax or my skills can pad the inevitable. Saving Private Evelyn absolutely sucked cyanide through a sippy cup. This game being absolute bullshit, coupled by the fact that upon starting this quest, I began to work in hazardous conditions, aka my chair broke down after four good years of service, spiraled me into mental instability. This game could suck my entire bleached asshole, man. Fucking hell, dude. If you're only interested in the spark notes, I was livid after every death, and this place made me want to gargle glass with my asshole. I'll admit, I could have optimized my loadout to make this easier, but despite my questionable methods and ethics, in due time, my tornado of lead and explosives proved to be destructive to my enemies and their southern regions. Following a handful of resets I lost count of, I made my way through, saved Devlin, and then apologized to myself for all the pain I just went through with an emotional support blunt, brought to you by yours truly, Johnny Reeves. With another quick trip into the metaverse, we learned that Evelyn was originally in collusion with the Voodoo Boys. Their goal was to steal the Keanu USB and use him to get into contact with an entity known by the name of Alt Cunningham. Johnny and his profound genius pointed me in the right direction of who I needed to call, and while I waited for their response, I met with Takemura to discuss how we would be taking down Yorinobu. Interestingly, the creator of One Piece, who just so happened to also be Hanako Arasaka's bodyguard, joined us. Our goal was to get him on our side, and after we Gamu Gamu no Gatlinged his ear holes with the shocking revelation that John Arasaka was assassinated by Yorinobu, he told us our evidence was inconclusive and that he would rather chemically castrate himself than commit treason. 
Without Oda's help, we were going to have to get into contact with Hanako the difficult and dangerous way. Not as dangerous as a baby gender reveal party, of course, but damn near close. Hanako was sure to show up at the Arasaka Macy's Day Parade, so the plan was to get in there, become the Giga Chad I was born to be, killing any piss drinker that got into my way, and then hit her with a healthy dose of cold hard facts. Guided by his purpose for truth, Takemura told me to stand by as he set this plan up, and it was now time for my sixth serving, a video game induced agony, as God so righteously intended. I made my way to the Voodoo Boys HQ, and in exchange for information on why they needed Johnny so bad, he wanted me to hit the local strip mall and take out their rival gang, the Animals. My three hour break of masochism up until this point felt great, but it was now 7pm dick flattening time, and trust me when I say that the animals were here to flatten my dick. On today's episode of What in the Reese's Peanut Butter Fuck Will CD Projekt Red Throw at Senza, this level showed off a brand new DBZ teleporting enemy. Facing them this early caught me off guard and threw me out of my Sharn gun. But thanks to a few objects that just so happened to be really good at sending people to the forever box, I found myself inside the mall to continue on my warpath. Thanks to range, I was able to avoid getting my asshole fisted by these men and their fists. And besides running into one of Axon's turrets and the occasional stray bullet, my cursed technique brought success, making this a whole lot easier than expected. Eventually, I got to Sasquatch, the woman that literally redefined the term, Muscle Mommy. Being chromed the fuck out was a personality trait for this woman, and she was here to instant transmission her hammer into my cranium. I thought that this fight was going to be hard, and at the beginning, it truly was. But if you let me borrow your eyeballs for just a few seconds, I'll show you footage of a man that has truly mastered and tempered the art of getting good. Once I learned her moveset, this fight went from Ultra Nightmare to Recruit Mode in an instant. And after I was done running around spanking meat, I silenced the problem the Voodoo Boys were having and finally met with Brigitte. Brigitte asked me to hop on the net to find the infamous netrunner known as Alt Cunningham. And without question, I decided to dip my toesies straight in. Immediately, we were thrown into a Christian, family-friendly flashback. I watched Keanu Reeves sling some dick, and then after taking control, Alt and I were jumped. In these interactable cutscenes, technique was key. Coming back from each reset, all I needed was a bit of practice. These men were practically begging for a beatdown, and that is exactly what they got after 27 tries and a bit of luck. It turns out that during my tussle, Alt was kidnapped by those goons, and because of that, the suicide squad was assembled to try and get her back. Thanks to my complete lack of self-awareness, shitty autosaves that set me back 5 minutes every time I died, and the will to save Alt, we were off to storm Arasaka HQ, following my 2 hours of experiencing euphoria through the means of getting clapped. Inside, things went smoothly, thanks to the fact that Keanu wasn't the only one here capable of penetrating penetrating things, and before I knew it, we made it to Alt. Alt and Johnny set up a plan to help V extract the tumor that was troubling him, and then I returned to the real world to diplomatically give the Voodoo Boys what they wanted, and avoided any sort of confrontation whatsoever, because if that happened, it would hypothetically cost me 76 resets and 2 hours of my precious time. I'm also definitely not breaking some sort of rule here on YouTube and risking my channel to be terminated by showing you all this much penetration. Now that the Voodoo Boys arc was over, it was time to meet with Rogue and see if she could get me into contact with someone that worked on Soul Killer and the chip inside my noggin. Upon arrival, it was clear that Bobby Kotick over here was only in this for the money, and after digging through the lint in my pockets, I handed over a few thousand V-Bucks to get this ball rolling. She pointed me in the direction of Pan Am, someone who could help in abducting this person of interest, and I set off on my way. Once I was done formally greeting myself, she hit me with the typical, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, and well, you guys know what that means. Hey guys, Senza here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Vasectomy Simulator. Pan Am had her whip stolen, and your 2022 content creator of the year was out here getting wild and crazy, fighting to get that baby back. I indulged in the famous American pastime known as dying to bullets, and after 17 tries of getting shot through walls and by random enemies, I decided that enough was enough, 
and whipped out the combo known as AI Kryptonite, aka Tech Rifles and Grenade Suppositories. I was pretty much unstoppable at this point, and Obama was becoming a badass at a geometric rate. Pan Am retrieved her vehicle thanks to my profound ingenuity, and because of my generous spirit, I even offered that we go off to silence the metaphorical ass that just so happened to be farting incessantly into her open mouth. There is only one thing more satisfying on this planet than a single wipe poop, and I will proudly say that cyberpunk wall hacks in a no damage run is one of them. Earlier on, I did mention that I would be avoiding stealth combat, and many of you may be thinking that tech rifles are an extension of this rule. I generally agree with that thought, and I did feel stinky about using this baby at first, but I like to think of these weapons as a return for my initial investment of torture at the beginning of this run. Additionally, there is literally no stealth involved, and it isn't my fault that CD Projekt Red gave its players a tool that is capable of destroying anyone's privileged to breathe through 60 pounds of cement. My job as the Grim Reaper was over and it was time for the abduction to begin. Keanu let me know about the new fragrance he was launching named Impressive Cock and it was made apparent that Kang Tao was going to do everything in their power to make sure this abduction didn't happen. Thanks to their copious amounts of money, they too had drones that were here to mildly inconvenience this challenge run. Kang Tao wasn't going to settle for anything other than my misfortune. But I, Senza, was out here bringing a whole new meaning to being built for this. Most challenge runs completely ignore scripted vehicle segments, as they are, once again, nearly impossible to complete without taking damage. But since I am genetically better at gaming than a majority of the population, I figured I would give them a shot to see just how far I would get. It was clear that this section was just another dice roll, so I buckled up, grabbed the Capri Sun, and with my unbridled determination, pounded at this thing until I got a damageless run. What this accomplishment meant was probably nothing, and this game did a good job at making me realize that when inside the power plant, I was forced to take one point of damage, shutting it down. At this point, my rage was potent enough to power a small sub-Saharan African village, and the fact that I was hit with another driving segment immediately back to back led me to beating my PR in the mental instability speedrun. I spent 30 minutes getting my beef curtains pressure cleaned, and after 36 tries, I decided to give up on attempting to no-hit this section. Compared to my past inconveniences that ranged from unavoidable psychic damage damage to erotic electro stimulation this one came in the form of paralysis while my enemies went on trying to penetrate me with bullets if you attempt this challenge after watching this video i recommend the alternative getting paper cuts on your tongue and drinking lemon juice this will easily provide the same amount of torture minus the 36 minutes of wasted time conversely abducting hellman was relatively easy and the dopamine response produced by saucing on these man children in only nine tries almost rivaled the time i I first witnessed a Girls Gone Wild commercial break during late night Spike TV. Hellman provided the info I needed and I gave him the rundown on how Keanu Silverhand was goaded with the sauce and busting it down sexual style all over my entire life. He offered to give Takamura and I a hand on removing the chip from my noggin and like a well-oiled machine I was back at it again with the self-dread and pointless life. It was time to breach the high security Arasaka compound to hack the exact parade float that Hanako was going to be on. If I had done the reconnaissance mission beforehand, I would have learned of different ways to tackle this beast, but since I hadn't, I was going to have to do this one blind. My original thought was to dive into this poopy asshole tongue first, brute forcing my way through to my objective. But after the first 16 tries, it was apparent that this was a terrible idea. I was completely outnumbered, and thanks to government funding, Arasaka had Metal Gear D from MGS2 over here to give me nothing but the D. To top off this mother of all omelets, the damn thing was capable of hacking me, making fighting it nearly impossible. 
so once again i used the weapon i discovered earlier to get past it and unfortunately for you all that was the last time i was going to make a metal gear solid reference for the rest of this video once i was done being a shitter and this game was done shitting on me in ways i have never been shat on before i found another way inside thanks to my favorite flavor of game design verticality with hanako's parade float hacked i made my quick escape and then decided to lay low as i waited for takamura to call me back when he was ready this game makes you believe that you are free to do as you please giving you 24 in-game hours to do whatever you wanted with but choice is just an illusion the only right option was to go grab best girl rebecca's shotgun so i can use it to poetically turn adam smasher's chrome dome into tech trash it was finally time for the moment no one had been waiting for arasaka's macy's day parade my capability of taking out all of the snipers in a sub 15 minute run was nothing short of excellence eager to get a taste of rebecca's sweet sweet shotgun i did contemplate blowing a load on one of the unaware snipers but then i decided abstinence with this weapon was imperative so i found a replacement nearly immediately slapping these mofos from downtown with quick hacks and this rifle made getting to hanako an absolute breeze with this loadout there was very little chance even my geriatric grandmother wouldn't be able to complete the sequence without taking damage except for if you accidentally step into a trip mine in that case you will take damage and all of it to be precise i made it to arasaka's netrunner and victory was in view until oda decided to prescribe me around 2000 milligrams of depression many wealthy corporations and individuals use their wealth to help those in need arasaka used their wealth to create an absolute giga chad beyond proportion for those that are interested solely in my misfortune it took me around two hours and i stopped counting after 94 resets once again i do want to mention that this was all self-inflicted because I truly didn't have much knowledge of this game or a specific build that could carry me in this fight. Oda had two man tits blades and running from him was pointless as teleporting behind you and letting you know that this was nothing personal was typically his cup of cum. Not only was he incredibly aggressive, but he was even capable of moving vertically in this arena. His levels of testosterone rivaled that of Keanu's, and it would be an understatement to say that he was exceptionally good at finding different ways to f*** me and this run. After spending hours trying many different fighting tactics, such as kiting him and grenade spamming, I decided to finally just, you know, try a different gun. Doing so made me realize that I was stupid and that I should feel stupid. On my first attempt, switching off of the Ajax to the tech rifle I praised earlier, I completely dumpstered this 1v1. Annihilating him that fast and realizing that the pain was over had me in a state of exhilaration I could only compare to post-nut clarity. I let Oda live for creating one of the best animes of all time, Takemura kidnapped Hanako to spill the beans, and then I went to meet with them so we could finally finish this godforsaken run. While letting Hanako know that her brother killed John Arasaka, our location was discovered, and the Saka Corporation security had no problem blowing out our assholes and asking questions later. There was no point in pleading for forgiveness since I had single-handedly reduced their forces by 25% and taken out Hanako's bodyguard. So I continued doing what I did best, saved Mr. Hot Boy, and got us out of there within just two tries. Normally, I am mentally immune to the wave of depression that washes over me when attempting to take on a difficult challenge, but I was sitting at 24 hours of playtime at this point, and I just wanted the f*** out of here. Our only option was to side with Hanako and Takamura, as that was our quickest escape route. In exchange for helping the squad take down Yorinobu and topple his throne, Hanako promised to get me the therapy that I needed. I spent my final moments with Johnny, reminiscing about the great, great times that we had together, and the unforgettable fisting sessions that he blessed me with. It was truly sad that it had come to this, but it was time to get him the f*** out of my head. I met up with Takemura and Hellman and we set off to drive a couple of bullets far down the mouth holes of Yorinobu and Adam Smasher. We pulled up to Hanako's literal iron fortress and since my knowledge in taking down Metal Gears was rather limited since, you know, I avoided all of them up until this point, it took me around 40 minutes to take one down, pussyfooting and blue balling it around her mansion. 
Amazons, the boys and I hopped in the whip, and then we Ubered all the way over to Arasaka Tower, ready to provide that primo dick to anyone in our way. Hanako revealed to me that John Arasaka's consciousness was uploaded before he died, and we used the fact that Mr. John was now a VTuber to convince Arasaka's chairman that Yorinobu killed him. When the fighting broke out, I had a few resets here and there, but once Takamura and I took down a juggernaut, it was over. This was where I realized that siding with Hanako was actually the optimal strategy for this challenge. I went out of my way to beat the dicks off of everyone and anyone that opposed me with my new toy. And although this was still a tedious fuck, it was a more than doable one. The best part was that ammo wasn't even a problem with these things laying around like hotcakes. In due course, I made it to Adam Smasher, and it was in my moral obligation to do David and Rebecca right by making sure Adam left here medically brain dead. Surprisingly, this fight was incredibly easy and only took a few pulls to get down. This LMG put in serious work, and besides learning each phase of the actual fight and his missile barrage, I was able to blow through it. On my final run, I edged Adam to just the right amount of health switched to Rebecca's shotgun and finished him off. 1224 resets later, I have come to the executive decision that you can beat Cyberpunk 2077 without taking damage. Although there are certain areas of this game that force you to take damage, I think we could call this one a win for the books. If you made it to the end of the video, comment Baja Blast and I'll heart your comment. If you enjoyed this crusade, make sure you subscribe, like, and stick around for some more shenanigans. I have more content on the way and hopefully at a much faster pace. Thank you to the Diaper Booty Chairman here on YouTube and over on Patreon for their undying support and thank you for taking time out of your day to even give me a chance. The fact that you even spent a minute listening to me talk means so damn much to me. See you all on the next one. Peace, love, and boners.